Question 1. Which regulatory agency oversees the enforcement of anti-fraud provisions in the municipal securities industry? A. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. B. Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. C. Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB. D. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. The correct answer is A. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. Explanation. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is responsible for enforcing anti-fraud provisions in the municipal securities industry, ensuring fair and transparent practices among all market participants. The SEC regulates the issuance, trading, and disclosure of municipal securities to protect investors and maintain market integrity. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Question 2. Ms. Garcia, a municipal issuer, is drafting disclosure documents for an upcoming bond offering. Which regulatory framework governs the rulemaking process for the municipal securities industry, including the establishment of disclosure rules? A. Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB. B. Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. C. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. D. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. The correct answer is A. Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB. Explanation. The Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB, is responsible for the rulemaking process governing the municipal securities industry. MSRB establishes rules related to disclosure, fair practices, and market transparency for municipal issuers, dealers, and advisors. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Question 3. Which of the following is true regarding the employment of manipulative and deceptive devices under the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act? A. Municipal issuers are exempt from the prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices. B. Only brokers and dealers are subject to the prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices. C. The prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices applies to all persons, including municipal issuers, brokers, and dealers. D. Municipal securities dealers are exempt from the prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices. The correct answer is C. The prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices applies to all persons, including municipal issuers, brokers, and dealers. Explanation. Under the Dodd-Frank Act, the prohibition against the employment of manipulative and deceptive devices extends to all persons involved in the municipal securities market, including municipal issuers, brokers, dealers, and municipal securities dealers. This provision aims to ensure integrity and fairness in the market and prevent fraudulent activities. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Question 4. Which of the following statements accurately describes the purpose of the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, CIPIC? A. CIPIC guarantees the performance of investments in the municipal securities market. B. CIPIC provides insurance coverage against investment losses due to market volatility. C. CIPIC protects investors against the insolvency of brokerage firms that are members of CIPIC. D. CIPIC ensures the liquidity of municipal securities in the secondary market. The correct answer is C. CIPIC protects investors against the insolvency of brokerage firms that are members of CIPIC. Explanation. The Securities Investor Protection Corporation, CIPIC, was established to protect investors against the insolvency of brokerage firms. CIPIC provides limited coverage for the recovery of securities and cash held by investors in the event of a brokerage firm's bankruptcy or failure. However, it does not guarantee the performance of investments or provide insurance against market losses. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Question 5. Mr. Smith, a municipal securities principal, is responsible for overseeing the general activities of the municipal securities business within his firm. Which of the following best describes his supervisory responsibilities? 
A. Monitoring individual broker performance and providing training as needed. B. Ensuring compliance with all rules and regulations governing municipal securities business. C. Setting specific investment strategies for clients based on their risk tolerance. D. Marketing and promoting specific municipal bond offerings to potential investors. The correct answer is B. Ensuring compliance with all rules and regulations governing municipal securities business. Explanation. As a municipal securities principal, Mr. Smith's primary responsibility is to ensure compliance with all rules and regulations governing the municipal securities business. This includes overseeing the firm's activities to ensure they adhere to industry standards and regulatory requirements set forth by organizations like the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board (MSRB). Monitoring individual broker performance and providing training may be part of his responsibilities, but ensuring compliance with regulations is paramount. Question 6. Ms. Johnson, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the firm's compliance procedures. Which of the following actions would best demonstrate her commitment to fulfilling her supervisory responsibilities? A. Reviewing marketing materials for accuracy and completeness. B. Conducting regular audits of client accounts for potential violations. C. Attending industry conferences to stay updated on market trends. D. Establishing written supervisory procedures, WSPs, to govern firm operations. The correct answer is D. Establishing written supervisory procedures, WSPs, to govern firm operations. Explanation. Establishing written supervisory procedures, WSPs, is a crucial aspect of fulfilling supervisory responsibilities for a municipal securities principal. WSPs outline the firm's policies and procedures for ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements and industry standards. By creating comprehensive WSPs, Ms. Johnson can ensure that all aspects of the firm's operations are properly supervised and documented, which is essential for regulatory compliance. Question 7. Mr. Thompson, a municipal securities principal, is discussing key industry terms with his team. Which of the following terms is specifically employed in MSRB rules to regulate the municipal securities business? A. Margin. B. Yield to maturity, YTM. C. Best execution. D. Markup. The correct answer is D. Markup. Explanation. Markup is a term commonly used in MSRB rules to regulate the municipal securities business. It refers to the difference between the price at which a dealer buys a security from a customer, the bid price, and the price at which the dealer sells the security to another customer, the ask price. MSRB rules impose certain restrictions on markups to ensure fair pricing for customers. Question 8. Mr. Johnson is responsible for ensuring compliance with registration, qualification, and continuing education requirements for municipal securities professionals in his firm. Which of the following actions best demonstrates his fulfillment of this responsibility? A. Conducting annual performance evaluations for all registered representatives. B. Verifying that all employees complete mandatory regulatory training programs. C. Assigning new employees to client accounts based on their qualifications. D. Hosting monthly team building workshops to improve employee morale. The correct answer is B. Verifying that all employees complete mandatory regulatory training programs. Explanation Verifying that all employees complete mandatory regulatory training programs is crucial for compliance with registration, qualification, and continuing education requirements for municipal securities professionals. This ensures that employees are adequately trained and knowledgeable about relevant regulations and industry standards. It is a proactive measure to prevent potential compliance violations and regulatory sanctions. Question 9. Ms. Smith, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the firm's systems and procedures to ensure compliance with regulations governing municipal securities activities. Which of the following systems and procedures is most essential for maintaining compliance? A. 
Customer Relationship Management CRM, software for tracking client communications. B. Email encryption software for securing electronic communications. C. Regularly updated written supervisory procedures, WSPs, outlining compliance protocols. D. Automated trading algorithms for executing client orders efficiently. The correct answer is C. Regularly updated written supervisory procedures, WSPs, outlining compliance protocols. Explanation. Regularly updated written supervisory procedures, WSPs, outlining compliance protocols are essential for maintaining compliance with regulations governing municipal securities activities. WSPs provide a framework for ensuring that the firm's operations adhere to applicable laws, rules, and regulations. They outline specific procedures for conducting business activities, managing risks, and addressing compliance issues. By keeping WSPs up to date, Ms. Smith can ensure that the firm's systems and procedures remain compliant with evolving regulatory requirements. Question 10. Mr. Thompson, a municipal securities principal, is explaining SIPC coverage limitations to a client. Which of the following would be considered a limitation of SIPC coverage? A. SIPC provides coverage for losses resulting from fraudulent investment schemes. B. SIPC provides coverage for losses due to market fluctuations in the value of securities. C. SIPC provides coverage for losses on investments in municipal bonds. D. SIPC provides coverage for a maximum of $500,000 per customer, including up to $250,000 in cash. The correct answer is D. SIPIC provides coverage for a maximum of $500,000 per customer, including up to $250,000 in cash. Explanation. One of the limitations of SIPIC coverage is the maximum amount of coverage provided per customer. SIPIC provides coverage for up to $500,000 per customer, including up to $250,000 in cash held in brokerage accounts. This coverage limit applies to the aggregate amount of securities and cash held by the customer in the event of a brokerage firm's insolvency. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Question 11. Mr. Thompson, a municipal securities principal, is implementing systems and procedures to comply with regulations governing municipal securities activities. Which of the following best describes the purpose of these systems and procedures? A. Maximizing profits for the firm's shareholders. B. Ensuring transparency and fairness in the municipal securities market. C. Minimizing competition from other market participants. D. Facilitating speculative trading in municipal securities. The correct answer is B. Ensuring transparency and fairness in the municipal securities market. Explanation. The primary purpose of implementing systems and procedures to comply with regulations governing municipal securities activities is to ensure transparency and fairness in the municipal securities market. These systems and procedures help promote investor protection, maintain market integrity, and prevent fraudulent or manipulative practices. By adhering to regulatory requirements, firms can instill confidence in investors and contribute to the overall efficiency and trustworthiness of the market. Question 12. Mr. Rodriguez, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the procedures for solicitation of municipal securities business in his firm. Which of the following actions best demonstrates compliance with associated persons' responsibilities in soliciting municipal securities business? A. Offering expensive gifts to potential clients to encourage business. B. Providing accurate and balanced information about municipal securities to clients. C. Concealing material information from clients to secure business deals. D. Promising guaranteed returns on investments without proper disclosure. The correct answer is B. Providing accurate and balanced information about municipal securities to clients. Explanation. Providing accurate and balanced information about municipal securities to clients is essential for compliance with associated persons' responsibilities in soliciting municipal securities business. 
Associated persons must ensure that all communications with clients are fair, balanced, and not misleading. By offering accurate information, they help clients make informed investment decisions and build trust in the firm's services. Question 13. Ms. Chen, a municipal securities principal, is assessing the compliance of her firm's activities with requirements regarding gifts and political contributions. Which of the following practices best aligns with regulatory expectations for gifts and political contributions in the municipal securities industry? A. Providing substantial monetary donations to political candidates without disclosure. B. Accepting lavish gifts from municipal issuers in exchange for underwriting contracts. C. Disclosing all gifts and political contributions made by the firm's associated persons. D. Engaging in quid pro quo arrangements with public officials for business favors. The correct answer is C. Disclosing all gifts and political contributions made by the firm's associated persons. Explanation Disclosing all gifts and political contributions made by the firm's associated persons is essential for compliance with requirements regarding gifts and political contributions in the municipal securities industry. Transparency in disclosing such activities helps promote integrity, prevent conflicts of interest, and maintain public trust. By disclosing gifts and contributions, firms demonstrate a commitment to ethical conduct and regulatory compliance. Question 14. Mr. Patel, a municipal securities principal, is conducting training sessions for the firm's associated persons regarding fair conduct in municipal securities activities. Which of the following scenarios best exemplifies compliance with responsibilities for fair and transparent dealings? A. Advising clients to purchase securities without explaining associated risks. B. Providing clients with prospectuses containing accurate information about securities. C. Withholding material information from clients to gain a competitive advantage. D. Manipulating market prices to maximize profits for the firm. The correct answer is B. Providing clients with prospectuses containing accurate information about securities. Explanation. Providing clients with prospectuses containing accurate information about securities demonstrates compliance with responsibilities for fair and transparent dealings in municipal securities activities. Prospectuses are legal documents that disclose essential information about securities, including risks, terms, and financial data. By providing accurate prospectuses, associated persons help clients make informed investment decisions and uphold regulatory standards for fair dealing. Question 15. Mr. Thompson, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the registration requirements for broker dealers under SEC regulations. Which of the following statements accurately reflects SEC registration requirements for broker dealers in the municipal securities industry? A. Broker dealers must register with the SEC only if they engage in transactions involving corporate securities. B. Broker dealers must register with the SEC if they conduct municipal securities business, irrespective of their activities with corporate securities. C. SEC registration is not required for broker dealers engaged in municipal securities activities, as oversight is solely under MSRB jurisdiction. D. Broker dealers are exempt from SEC registration if they operate as municipal advisors instead of engaging in trading activities. The correct answer is B. Broker dealers must register with the SEC if they conduct municipal securities business, irrespective of their activities with corporate securities. Explanation SEC registration is mandatory for broker dealers engaged in municipal securities business, regardless of their involvement in transactions with corporate securities. The Securities Exchange Act of 1934 requires broker dealers conducting municipal securities transactions to register with the SEC to ensure compliance with federal securities laws. Question 16. Ms. Lopez, a municipal securities principal, is assessing the requirements for establishing a separately identifiable department or division of a bank engaging in municipal securities dealer activities. Which of the following characteristics defines a separately identifiable department or division under SEC regulations? A. 
a division within the bank that conducts municipal securities activities on an ad hoc basis. b. A department within the bank that operates independently from other business units and is dedicated solely to municipal securities dealer activities. c. A unit within the bank that shares resources and personnel with other business lines, making it difficult to distinguish its municipal securities operations. d. A segment within the bank responsible for municipal securities activities, but under the direct control of the bank's general management. The correct answer is B. A department within the bank that operates independently from other business units and is dedicated solely to municipal securities dealer activities. Explanation. According to SEC regulations, a separately identifiable department or division of a bank engaging in municipal securities dealer activities must operate independently from other business units and be exclusively dedicated to municipal securities operations. This ensures clear segregation and supervision of municipal securities activities within the bank. Question 17. Mr. Khan, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the standards of professional qualification for individuals working in the municipal securities industry. Which of the following criteria must individuals meet to satisfy the standards of professional qualification? A. Completion of a bachelor's degree in any field of study. B. Passing the Series 7 exam administered by FINRA. C. Obtaining a certificate in municipal securities from a recognized educational institution. D. Fulfilling the qualification requirements set forth by MSRB for municipal advisor professionals. The correct answer is D. Fulfilling the qualification requirements set forth by MSRB for municipal advisor professionals. Explanation. To satisfy the standards of professional qualification in the municipal securities industry, Individuals must fulfill the qualification requirements established by the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB, for municipal advisor professionals. These requirements may include passing relevant examinations, obtaining certifications, or meeting educational prerequisites specific to municipal advisory roles. Question 18. What are the regulatory requirements for the opening and maintenance of customer accounts in the municipal securities business? A. Providing verbal consent from the customer and keeping a written record of the transaction. B. Submitting a copy of the customer's ID to the SEC and maintaining a detailed log of account activities. C. Collecting essential information about the customer and obtaining written authorization before executing transactions. D. Requesting approval from the firm's compliance officer before initiating any customer account activity. The correct answer is C, collecting essential information about the customer and obtaining written authorization before executing transactions. Explanation. In the municipal securities business, firms are required to collect necessary information about customers, including their financial situation, investment objectives, and risk tolerance. Before executing any transactions, written authorization from the customer must be obtained. This process ensures that the firm understands the customer's needs and can recommend suitable investments accordingly, in compliance with regulatory requirements. Question 19. Mr. Johnson, a municipal securities principal, is responsible for supervising salespersons within his firm. What tasks should he perform to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements? A. Conducting random phone calls to customers to verify account information. B. Reviewing and approving all communications and transactions conducted by salespersons. C. Providing salespersons with gifts and incentives to boost their performance. D. Ignoring minor violations by salespersons to avoid unnecessary paperwork. The correct answer is B. Reviewing and approving all communications and transactions conducted by salespersons. Explanation. As a municipal securities principal, Mr. Johnson plays a crucial role in supervising salespersons within his firm. Reviewing and approving all communications and transactions conducted by salespersons is essential to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements. 
By actively monitoring these activities, Mr. Johnson can detect any potential violations or misconduct and take corrective actions promptly, thus maintaining the integrity of the firm's operations. Question 20. In the municipal securities business, what records should be maintained by firms regarding customer accounts? A. Records of the firm's financial statements and annual budget projections. B. Copies of customer identification documents and personal contact information. C. Documentation of customer complaints and resolutions, if any. D. Reports of salesperson's daily activities and performance metrics. The correct answer is C. Documentation of customer complaints and resolutions, if any. Explanation. Firms in the municipal securities business are required to maintain records of customer complaints and resolutions as part of their compliance obligations. This documentation helps track any issues raised by customers and the steps taken to address them, ensuring transparency and accountability in client interactions. By maintaining comprehensive records of customer complaints and resolutions, firms can demonstrate their commitment to addressing customer concerns and complying with regulatory requirements. Question 21. Which of the following best describes the requirements governing communications with customers in the municipal securities business? A. Communications must always be conducted in person to ensure clarity and transparency. B. Firms must maintain written records of all communications with customers, including emails and instant messages. C. Verbal communications with customers are exempt from regulatory scrutiny. D. Firms are not required to disclose potential risks associated with investment recommendations. The correct answer is B. Firms must maintain written records of all communications with customers, including emails and instant messages. Explanation In the municipal securities business, firms are obligated to maintain written records of all communications with customers, regardless of the communication method used. This includes emails, instant messages, letters, and any other form of communication. These records serve as important documentation for regulatory compliance, dispute resolution, and customer protection. Question 22. Ms. Smith, a municipal securities principal, is evaluating an investment recommendation for a customer. What should she consider to ensure the recommendation is suitable? A. The customer's preferred investment strategy, regardless of risk tolerance. B. The potential for high returns without regard to the customer's financial situation. C. The customer's financial goals, risk tolerance, and investment experience. D. The investment's popularity among other customers of the firm. The correct answer is C. The customer's financial goals, risk tolerance, and investment experience. Explanation. When evaluating an investment recommendation for a customer, it is crucial for the municipal securities principle to consider factors such as the customer's financial goals, risk tolerance, and investment experience. This assessment helps ensure that the recommended investment is suitable for the customer's individual circumstances and aligns with their objectives. By taking into account these factors, Ms. Smith can help mitigate the risk of recommending unsuitable investments to customers. Question 23. Which of the following statements accurately reflects the suitability rules applicable to municipal securities transactions? A. Suitability rules only apply to customers with large investment portfolios. B. Firms must prioritize their own financial interests when assessing suitability for customers. C. Investment recommendations must be suitable based on the customer's financial situation and needs. D. Suitability rules do not apply to recommendations made by municipal securities principles. The correct answer is C. Investment recommendations must be suitable based on the customer's financial situation and needs. Explanation. Suitability rules require that investment recommendations made by firms and their associated persons must be suitable for the customer based on their financial situation, investment objectives, risk tolerance, and other relevant factors. This ensures that customers receive recommendations that are appropriate for their individual circumstances and helps protect them from unsuitable investments. 
Question 24. Ms. Rodriguez is considering opening a brokerage account and asks about the protection offered by SIPIC. Which of the following statements accurately describes the coverage provided by SIPIC? A. SIPIC guarantees that investors will not experience any losses in their brokerage accounts. B. SIPIC provides protection against losses resulting from investment decisions made by the investor. C. SIPIC provides limited coverage for the recovery of securities and cash in the event of a brokerage firm's insolvency. D. SIPIC provides insurance coverage for losses due to market volatility. The correct answer is C. SIPIC provides limited coverage for the recovery of securities and cash in the event of a brokerage firm's insolvency. Explanation SIPIC provides limited coverage for the recovery of securities and cash held by customers of failed brokerage firms in the event of insolvency. It does not guarantee investment performance or protect against losses resulting from investment decisions. Instead, SIPIC coverage is intended to provide a level of protection in case a brokerage firm fails and cannot return assets to its customers. Therefore, option C is the correct answer. Question 25. Which of the following activities is generally considered improper or prohibited in the context of municipal security sales? A. Providing customers with full disclosure of potential risks associated with recommended investments. B. Accepting gifts from customers as a token of appreciation for investment recommendations. C. Making unsuitable investment recommendations based on the customer's financial situation. D. Conducting thorough due diligence on recommended securities before making investment recommendations. The correct answer is C. Making unsuitable investment recommendations based on the customer's financial situation. Explanation. In the context of municipal securities sales, it is improper and prohibited to make unsuitable investment recommendations to customers. Suitability requirements mandate that recommendations must align with the customer's financial situation, investment objectives, risk tolerance, and other relevant factors. Making recommendations that are not suitable for the customer's circumstances can expose them to unnecessary risks and potential losses. Question 26. Mr. Johnson, a municipal securities principal, oversees a team of registered representatives who manage discretionary accounts for clients. What unique requirement should Mr. Johnson be aware of regarding discretionary accounts? A. Discretionary accounts must be approved by the client before any trades can be executed. B. Registered representatives have unlimited authority to make investment decisions in discretionary accounts. C. Mr. Johnson is not responsible for reviewing the suitability of trades executed in discretionary accounts. D. Written authorization from the client is required before exercising discretion over the account. The correct answer is D. Written authorization from the client is required before exercising discretion over the account. Explanation. In the context of discretionary accounts, Registered representatives must obtain written authorization from the client before exercising discretion over the account. This written authorization outlines the specific parameters within which the representative is authorized to make investment decisions on behalf of the client. Failure to obtain proper authorization before exercising discretion over an account is a violation of regulatory requirements. Question 27. Which of the following actions is generally deemed improper or prohibited in sales-related activities within the municipal securities business? A. Providing customers with accurate and balanced information about investment products. B. Engaging in excessive trading to generate commissions without regard for the customer's best interests. C. Conducting thorough background checks on prospective customers to assess their investment knowledge. D. Offering discounts or incentives to customers for making timely payments on purchased securities. The correct answer is B. Engaging in excessive trading to generate commissions without regard for the customer's best interests. Explanation. Engaging in excessive trading, also known as churning, 
To generate commissions without regard for the customer's best interests is considered improper and prohibited in sales-related activities within the municipal securities business. Churning involves excessive buying and selling of securities in a customer's account primarily to generate commissions for the broker or dealer. This practice is unethical and violates the fiduciary duty owed to customers. Question 28. Which of the following statements accurately describes the handling of customer complaints in the municipal securities business? A. Customer complaints must be reported to the SEC within 30 days of receipt. B. Firms are not required to maintain records of customer complaints. C. Customer complaints must be reviewed and responded to promptly by the firm's designated personnel. D. Firms are only required to address customer complaints if they result in monetary losses exceeding $10,000. The correct answer is C. Customer complaints must be reviewed and responded to promptly by the firm's designated personnel. Explanation In the municipal securities business, firms are required to promptly review and respond to customer complaints. This ensures that customer concerns are addressed in a timely manner and helps maintain the integrity of the market. Firms must have procedures in place for handling complaints, including documenting the complaint, investigating the matter, and providing a response to the customer. Failure to address customer complaints appropriately can result in regulatory sanctions and damage to the firm's reputation. Question 29. Mr. Smith, a municipal securities principal, is overseeing the origination and syndication of new issue municipal securities. What activities are typically required of Mr. Smith in this supervisory role? A. Ensuring that only institutional investors participate in the syndication process. B. Reviewing and approving the offering documents before they are distributed to potential investors. C. Determining the interest rates for the new issue municipal securities. D. Personally conducting negotiations with individual investors regarding the terms of the securities offering. The correct answer is B. Reviewing and approving the offering documents before they are distributed to potential investors. Explanation. As a municipal securities principal involved in the origination and syndication of new issue municipal securities, Mr. Smith is responsible for reviewing and approving the offering documents before they are distributed to potential investors. This includes ensuring that the offering documents comply with regulatory requirements, accurately represent the terms of the securities offering, and provide investors with all material information necessary to make informed investment decisions. Question 30. In the context of municipal securities origination and syndication, what is a key responsibility of a municipal securities principal related to financial advisory roles? A. Determining the underwriting spreads for the new issue municipal securities. B. Conducting due diligence on the financial condition of the issuer. C. Negotiating the terms of the securities offering with potential investors. D. Reviewing the issuer's creditworthiness and advising on the structuring of the securities offering. The correct answer is D. Reviewing the issuer's creditworthiness and advising on the structuring of the securities offering. Explanation. In financial advisory roles related to municipal securities origination and syndication, a key responsibility of a municipal securities principal is to review the issuer's creditworthiness and advise on the structuring of the securities offering. This involves assessing the financial condition of the issuer, analyzing the terms of the proposed securities offering, and providing recommendations to the issuer on the appropriate structure and terms to attract investors while meeting the issuer's financing needs. Question 31. What are the dealer's obligations when serving as a financial advisor to an issuer in the municipal securities market? A. The dealer is only required to provide general market information to the issuer. B. The dealer must disclose all conflicts of interest to the issuer. C. The dealer is exempt from any fiduciary responsibilities when acting as a financial advisor. D. The dealer is responsible for ensuring that the issuer follows all regulatory requirements. The correct answer is B. 
the dealer must disclose all conflicts of interest to the issuer. Explanation When serving as a financial advisor to an issuer, a dealer in the municipal securities market has fiduciary obligations to the issuer. One of these obligations is to disclose all conflicts of interest to the issuer. This ensures transparency and helps the issuer make informed decisions. Failure to disclose conflicts of interest can lead to legal and regulatory consequences. Question 32. In the context of municipal securities, what does the term advisory relationship typically refer to? A. A contractual agreement between a dealer and an investor. B. A fiduciary relationship between a dealer and an issuer. C. An informal agreement between a dealer and a retail investor. D. A legal obligation between a dealer and a regulatory authority. The correct answer is B. A fiduciary relationship between a dealer and an issuer. Explanation. In municipal securities, an advisory relationship typically refers to a fiduciary relationship between a dealer, acting as a financial advisor, and an issuer. This relationship involves providing advice and guidance to the issuer on various matters related to municipal finance, such as bond issuance, debt management, and capital planning. As part of this relationship, the dealer owes a duty of loyalty and care to the issuer and must act in the issuer's best interests. Question 33. What requirements exist regarding the documentation of the advisory relationship between a dealer and an issuer in the municipal securities market? A. There are no specific requirements for documenting the advisory relationship. B. Documentation of the advisory relationship must be retained by the dealer for a minimum of three years. C. The advisory relationship must be documented in writing with a signed agreement between the dealer and the issuer. D. Documentation of the advisory relationship is optional and left to the discretion of the dealer. The correct answer is C. The advisory relationship must be documented in writing with a signed agreement between the dealer and the issuer. Explanation In the municipal securities market, the advisory relationship between a dealer and an issuer must be documented in writing with a signed agreement. This agreement outlines the scope of the dealer's services, compensation arrangements, and other terms relevant to the relationship. Documentation helps clarify expectations, reduces the risk of misunderstandings, and provides a record of the party's commitments. Failure to document the advisory relationship properly can lead to disputes and regulatory scrutiny. Question 34. What are the responsibilities of a lead manager in a municipal securities syndicate? A. Solely responsible for executing trades on behalf of the syndicate members. B. Ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements and managing the syndicate's activities. C. Providing investment advice to individual investors participating in the syndicate. D. Facilitating communication between the issuer and the underwriting syndicate. The correct answer is B. Ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements and managing the syndicate's activities. Explanation. As the lead manager of a municipal securities syndicate, one of the primary responsibilities is to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and oversee the syndicate's activities. This includes coordinating the underwriting process, managing the syndicate's bidding activities, ensuring proper disclosure to investors, and adhering to relevant securities laws and regulations. The lead manager plays a pivotal role in maintaining the integrity and efficiency of the syndicate. Question 35. What is the typical time frame associated with the lead manager's responsibility to provide notice of an issuer's award of a competitive sale? A. Within 24 hours of the award announcement. B. Within 48 hours of the award announcement. C. Within one week of the award announcement. D. Within one month of the award announcement. The correct answer is A. Within 24 hours of the award announcement. Explanation. In a competitive sale of municipal securities, the lead manager is typically required to provide notice of the issuer's award within 24 hours of the announcement. This ensures timely communication to syndicate members and allows for efficient coordination of underwriting activities. 
Prompt notification helps maintain transparency and enables syndicate members to fulfill their obligations effectively. Question 36. What is the primary role of the lead manager in the administration of a municipal securities syndicate? A. Negotiating pricing and terms with the issuer on behalf of syndicate members. B. Managing the underwriting process and coordinating activities among syndicate members. C. Providing investment advice to individual investors participating in the syndicate. D. Conducting due diligence on behalf of the issuer to assess market conditions. The correct answer is B. Managing the underwriting process and coordinating activities among syndicate members. Explanation. The primary role of the lead manager in the administration of a municipal securities syndicate is to manage the underwriting process and coordinate activities among syndicate members. This includes setting pricing and terms, allocating securities to syndicate members, ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements, and overseeing the distribution of securities to investors. The lead manager acts as the central point of contact and plays a crucial role in facilitating collaboration and communication within the syndicate. Question 37. What is the primary responsibility of a municipal securities principal regarding the supervision of trading? A. Executing trades on behalf of clients to ensure timely transactions. B. Reviewing and approving transactions to ensure compliance with regulations. C. Providing investment advice to clients based on market trends. D. Monitoring market volatility to optimize trading strategies. The correct answer is B. Reviewing and approving transactions to ensure compliance with regulations. Explanation. A municipal securities principal is responsible for supervising the trading of municipal securities within their firm. This includes reviewing and approving transactions to ensure they comply with relevant regulations, firm policies, and industry standards. By actively overseeing trading activities, the principal helps maintain market integrity, mitigates risks, and ensures fair dealing with customers. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Question 38. Which of the following is a requirement related to the quotation of municipal securities? A. Displaying bid and ask prices on an electronic platform. B. Providing real-time price updates to investors upon request. C. Maintaining a central repository of historical trading data. D. Reporting trading volumes to regulatory authorities monthly. The correct answer is A. Displaying bid and ask prices on an electronic platform. Explanation. One requirement related to the quotation of municipal securities is to display bid and ask prices on an electronic platform. This enhances transparency in the market by providing investors with access to current pricing information, facilitating fair and efficient trading. Electronic platforms enable buyers and sellers to view bid and ask prices, promoting price discovery and liquidity in the municipal securities market. Question 39. In the context of municipal securities trading, what is the role of a municipal securities principal in overseeing quotations? A. Negotiating prices with market participants to ensure fair valuation. B. Reviewing and approving the dissemination of bid and ask prices. C. Providing market analysis to facilitate trading decisions. D. Monitoring trading volumes to identify market trends. The correct answer is B. Reviewing and approving the dissemination of bid and ask prices. Explanation. A municipal securities principal is responsible for reviewing and approving the dissemination of bid and ask prices to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and firm policies. By overseeing the quotation process, the principal helps maintain market integrity and transparency, ensuring that investors have access to accurate pricing information. This oversight is crucial for fostering fair and efficient trading in the municipal securities market. Question 40. What are the record-keeping responsibilities for principal and agency transactions in the municipal securities industry? A. Only the firm's compliance officer is responsible for maintaining records. B. 
records must be maintained for a minimum of three years from the date of the transaction. C. Record keeping is optional for principal transactions but mandatory for agency transactions. D. Records must be kept indefinitely without any specific time frame. The correct answer is B. Records must be maintained for a minimum of three years from the date of the transaction. Explanation. In the municipal securities industry, firms are required to maintain records of both principal and agency transactions. These records must be retained for a minimum of three years from the date of the transaction, as mandated by regulatory requirements. Proper record keeping ensures transparency, facilitates regulatory oversight, and helps resolve disputes or investigations. Question 41. Which of the following statements regarding reporting municipal securities transactions to the MSRB or its designee is accurate? A. All transactions must be reported within one business day of execution. B. Reporting is only required for transactions exceeding $100,000 in value. C. Reporting is the sole responsibility of the executing broker-dealer. D. Reporting timeframes vary depending on the type of transaction and security. The correct answer is D. Reporting timeframes vary depending on the type of transaction and security. Explanation. Reporting municipal securities transactions to the MSRB or its designee is subject to specific timeframes determined by the type of transaction and security involved. Different transactions may have varying reporting requirements based on factors such as the type of security, transaction size, and whether it is a principal or agency trade. It is essential for firms to adhere to these reporting deadlines to ensure compliance with regulatory obligations and facilitate market transparency. Question 42. In the context of municipal securities transactions, what is the purpose of reporting to the MSRB or its designee? A. To facilitate real-time settlement of transactions between counterparties. B. To provide investors with access to historical transaction data. C. To ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and promote market transparency. D. To allow broker-dealers to track market trends and adjust trading strategies. The correct answer is C to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and promote market transparency. Explanation. The primary purpose of reporting municipal securities transactions to the MSRB or its designee is to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and promote market transparency. By reporting transactions in a timely and accurate manner, regulatory authorities can monitor market activities, detect potential violations, and ensure fair and orderly trading in the municipal securities market. Additionally, transparent reporting enhances investor confidence and facilitates informed decision-making. Question 43. What is the significance of the assignment of CUSIP numbers in secondary market trading of municipal securities? A. CUSIP numbers facilitate the identification of the primary market issuer. B. CUSIP numbers determine the interest rate payable to bondholders. C. CUSIP numbers help standardize the trading and tracking of securities. D. CUSIP numbers indicate the maturity date of the municipal bond. The correct answer is C. USIP numbers help standardize the trading and tracking of securities. Explanation. CUSIP, Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedures, numbers play a crucial role in the secondary market trading of municipal securities. These unique identifiers help standardize the trading and tracking of securities by providing a universally recognized reference for each security. CUSIP numbers enable efficient communication and settlement processes among market participants, facilitating transparency and liquidity in the secondary market. Question 44. In the context of municipal securities trading, what constitutes a fictitious trade report, and why is it prohibited? A. A fictitious trade report is a transaction executed without the involvement of a registered representative, and it is prohibited to prevent market manipulation. B. A fictitious trade report involves the dissemination of false information regarding executed transactions to artificially inflate market activity, 
and it is prohibited to maintain market integrity. C. A fictitious trade report refers to trades settled outside of normal market hours, and it is prohibited to ensure fair access to market participants. D. A fictitious trade report is a transaction executed without proper documentation, and it is prohibited to prevent unauthorized trading. The correct answer is B. A fictitious trade report involves the dissemination of false information regarding executed transactions to artificially inflate market activity, and it is prohibited to maintain market integrity. Explanation A fictitious trade report in municipal securities trading refers to the dissemination of false or misleading information about executed transactions. This practice artificially inflates market activity and may deceive investors and other market participants. Fictitious trade reports undermine market integrity, erode investor confidence, and can lead to market manipulation and unfair advantages. Regulatory authorities prohibit fictitious trade reports to maintain the integrity and transparency of the municipal securities market. Question 45. Why is it essential for market participants to adhere to regulations governing the assignment of CUSIP numbers in secondary market trading? A to ensure accurate pricing of municipal securities. b. To streamline the issuance process for new municipal bonds. c. To facilitate the identification and tracking of individual securities. d. To determine the eligibility of municipal securities for tax-exempt status. The correct answer is c. To facilitate the identification and tracking of individual securities. Explanation. Adherence to regulations governing the assignment of CUSIP numbers in secondary market trading is crucial to facilitate the identification and tracking of individual securities. CUSIP numbers provide unique identifiers for securities, enabling efficient communication, trading, and settlement processes among market participants. By accurately assigning and using CUSIP numbers, market participants can enhance transparency, liquidity, and operational efficiency in the secondary market for municipal securities. Question 46. What is the purpose of confirming transactions in the municipal securities business? A. To ensure timely payment of accrued interest to bondholders. B. To verify the accuracy of trade details and terms between counterparties. C. To determine the suitability of investments for clients. D to assess the creditworthiness of municipal issuers? The correct answer is B. To verify the accuracy of trade details and terms between counterparties. Explanation. Confirming transactions in the municipal securities business serves the crucial purpose of verifying the accuracy of trade details and terms between counterparties. It involves the exchange of trade information to ensure both parties agree on essential transaction parameters such as security identification, quantity, price, settlement date, and any special terms or conditions. Confirmations help mitigate the risk of errors, misunderstandings, or disputes, thereby promoting transparency and efficiency in the trading process. Question 47. What is the settlement process for trades in the municipal securities market? A. T plus 1 settlement, where transactions are settled one business day after the trade date. B. T plus 2 settlement, where transactions are settled two business days after the trade date. C. T plus 3 settlement, where transactions are settled three business days after the trade date. D. Same day settlement, where transactions are settled on the same day as the trade date. The correct answer is B, T plus 2 settlement, where transactions are settled two business days after the trade date. Explanation. In the municipal securities market, the settlement process typically follows a T plus 2 settlement cycle, where transactions are settled two business days after the trade date. This means that buyers must deliver payment, and sellers must deliver securities within two business days of executing the trade. T plus 2 settlement is the industry standard for most securities transactions in the United States, including municipal securities. It allows for efficient clearing and settlement processes while providing sufficient time for trade confirmation and processing. Question 48. 
why are record-keeping requirements crucial for the operational aspects of supervising the municipal securities business? A. To facilitate transparency and regulatory oversight of market activities. B. To ensure compliance with tax regulations governing municipal bond interest. C. To determine the credit ratings of municipal issuers. D. To assess the suitability of municipal securities investments for clients. The correct answer is A. To facilitate transparency and regulatory oversight of market activities. Explanation. Record-keeping requirements play a critical role in the operational aspects of supervising the municipal securities business by facilitating transparency and regulatory oversight of market activities. Comprehensive record-keeping enables regulatory authorities to monitor market participants' compliance with applicable laws, rules, and regulations, ensuring fair and orderly conduct in the municipal securities market. Question 49. What are the consequences of failing to report municipal securities trades to the MSRB within the required timeframe? A. Increased tax liabilities for investors involved in the trade. B. Loss of eligibility for participating in future municipal bond issuances. C. Potential fines and regulatory sanctions for non-compliance. D. Suspension of trading privileges on municipal securities exchanges. The correct answer is C. Potential fines and regulatory sanctions for non-compliance. Explanation. Failing to report municipal securities trades to the MSRB within the required timeframe can result in potential fines and regulatory sanctions for non-compliance. The MSRB requires timely reporting of municipal securities trades to promote transparency and market integrity. Failure to adhere to these reporting requirements may lead to enforcement actions by regulatory authorities, including monetary penalties and other disciplinary measures. Question 50. What role do delivery instructions play in the handling of trade or settlement problems in the municipal securities market? A. They facilitate the negotiation of settlement terms between counterparties. B. They specify the method and timing of delivering securities to buyers. C. They determine the tax treatment of interest payments on municipal bonds. D. They establish the creditworthiness of municipal issuers. The correct answer is B. They specify the method and timing of delivering securities to buyers. Explanation. Delivery instructions play a crucial role in the handling of trade or settlement problems in the municipal securities market by specifying the method and timing of delivering securities to buyers. These instructions outline how and when securities should be transferred from the seller to the buyer to fulfill the terms of the transaction. Clear and accurate delivery instructions help ensure smooth settlement processes and mitigate the risk of settlement failures or disputes. Question 51. Which of the following records is typically required to be maintained by municipal securities dealers for a minimum of six years, according to regulatory requirements? A. Trade confirmations. B. Customer account statements. C. Emails and instant messages. D. Employee training records. The correct answer is C. Emails and instant messages. Explanation. Regulatory requirements mandate that municipal securities dealers maintain certain records for specified timeframes to ensure compliance and facilitate regulatory oversight. Emails and instant messages, which may contain important communications related to customer transactions, compliance issues, or internal discussions, are typically required to be retained for a minimum of six years. This requirement helps regulatory authorities to review communication records during audits or investigations. Question 52. What is the primary purpose of maintaining records related to the transfer of customer accounts to other firms in the municipal securities business? A. To track changes in customer investment preferences over time. B. To ensure compliance with anti-money laundering regulations. C. To facilitate the seamless transfer of customer assets and records. D. To monitor the performance of individual securities in customer portfolios. The correct answer is C. 
to facilitate the seamless transfer of customer assets and records. Explanation The primary purpose of maintaining records related to the transfer of customer accounts to other firms in the municipal securities business is to facilitate the seamless transfer of customer assets and records. These records document the details of the transfer process, including the assets transferred, transfer dates, and communication with the receiving firm, to ensure compliance with regulatory requirements and protect the interests of customers. Question 30. In which situation would a municipal securities dealer be required to facilitate the transfer of a customer account to another firm? A. The customer wants to consolidate their investments into a single brokerage account. B. The customer is dissatisfied with the performance of their investments. C. The firm is expanding its operations to offer new financial products. D. The firm is undergoing a change in ownership or restructuring. The correct answer is D. The firm is undergoing a change in ownership or restructuring. Explanation Municipal securities dealers are obligated to facilitate the transfer of customer accounts to another firm when the firm undergoes a change in ownership or restructuring. This requirement ensures that customers' investments are protected and that they have continuity of service even if their original firm undergoes significant changes. Regulatory rules mandate that customer accounts must be transferred promptly and efficiently to the receiving firm, with all assets and records intact. Question 54. What are the consequences of failing to handle trade or settlement problems appropriately in the municipal securities business? A. Decreased liquidity in the secondary market for affected securities. B. Increased regulatory scrutiny and potential enforcement actions. C. Enhanced market efficiency and transparency. D. Higher credit ratings for municipal issuers involved in the trades. The correct answer is B. Increased regulatory scrutiny and potential enforcement actions. Explanation. Failing to handle trade or settlement problems appropriately in the municipal securities business can result in increased regulatory scrutiny and potential enforcement actions. Regulatory authorities expect market participants to promptly address and resolve trade or settlement issues to maintain market integrity and protect investor interests. Failure to do so may lead to regulatory investigations, fines, and other disciplinary measures. Question 55. Mr. X, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the procedures for delivering securities to customers. Which of the following scenarios correctly describes a situation where a delivery obligation arises for a municipal securities dealer? A. The dealer has received a customer order to purchase municipal securities but has not yet executed the trade. B. The dealer has executed a trade on behalf of a customer but has not yet received payment for the securities. C. The dealer has executed a trade on behalf of a customer and received payment for the securities. D. The dealer has received an inquiry from a potential customer about the availability of certain municipal securities. The correct answer is C. The dealer has executed a trade on behalf of a customer and received payment for the securities. Explanation. In the context of delivering securities to customers, a delivery obligation arises for a municipal securities dealer when the dealer has executed a trade on behalf of a customer and received payment for the securities. Once the dealer receives payment, they are obligated to deliver the securities to the customer according to the terms of the transaction. This ensures that customers receive the securities they have purchased in a timely manner. Question 56. Which of the following transactions is most likely to involve a customer DVP, RVP transaction in the municipal securities market? A. A municipal bond dealer selling bonds to another dealer for immediate delivery and payment. B. A municipal securities dealer purchasing bonds from a customer and delivering them to the customer's account at another firm. C. A municipal bond investor selling bonds and instructing their broker to deliver the bonds to a different custodian. D. A municipal securities firm executing a trade on behalf of a customer and arranging for simultaneous delivery and payment. The correct answer is D. 
a municipal securities firm executing a trade on behalf of a customer and arranging for simultaneous delivery and payment. Explanation. A customer DVP, RVP, delivery versus payment, receipt versus payment, transaction in the municipal securities market typically involves a situation where a municipal securities firm executes a trade on behalf of a customer and arranges for simultaneous delivery and payment. In such transactions, the delivery of securities is contingent upon the receipt of payment or vice versa, ensuring that both parties fulfill their obligations concurrently. This mechanism helps reduce counterparty risk and ensures efficient settlement of trades. Question 57. In the context of minimum denominations for municipal securities, what does it signify if a bond is issued with a minimum denomination of $5,000? A. Individual investors are prohibited from purchasing bonds in amounts less than $5,000. B. Bonds must be traded in increments of $5,000 or multiples thereof. C. The issuer must sell bonds in blocks of $5,000 to institutional investors only. D. Financial institutions are required to maintain a minimum capital investment of $5,000 in municipal bonds. The correct answer is B. Bonds must be traded in increments of $5,000 or multiples thereof. Explanation. When a bond is issued with a minimum denomination of $5,000, it signifies that bonds must be traded in increments of $5,000 or multiples thereof. This requirement ensures standardization in the trading of municipal securities and helps facilitate liquidity in the secondary market. Investors must purchase or trade bonds in amounts that comply with the specified minimum denomination to ensure consistency and efficiency in trading. Question 58. Mr. X, a municipal securities principal, is overseeing the syndicate administration for a new municipal bond offering. Which of the following statements accurately describes the prohibition on charging fees to issuers in a primary offering? A. Underwriters are prohibited from charging fees to issuers except for expenses directly related to the offering. B. Underwriters may charge fees to issuers for any services rendered during the underwriting process. C. Underwriters are only allowed to charge fees to issuers if the offering involves exempt securities. D. Underwriters are not subject to any restrictions regarding charging fees to issuers in primary offerings. The correct answer is A. Underwriters are prohibited from charging fees to issuers except for expenses directly related to the offering. Explanation. In a primary offering of municipal securities, underwriters are generally prohibited from charging fees to issuers except for expenses directly related to the offering. These expenses may include costs incurred for printing offering documents, legal fees, and other necessary expenses directly associated with the issuance of the securities. The prohibition aims to prevent underwriters from imposing excessive fees on issuers and ensures that the costs incurred by issuers are reasonable and justified. Question 59. Ms. Garcia, a municipal issuer, engages in deceptive practices during the issuance of municipal securities. Which regulatory body is responsible for enforcing the prohibition against such manipulative activities? A. Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. B. Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, MSRB. C. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. D. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC. The correct answer is C. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. Explanation. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is responsible for enforcing the prohibition against manipulative and deceptive practices in the municipal securities market, as mandated by the Dodd-Frank Act. The SEC has regulatory oversight and enforcement authority over securities laws and regulations, including those related to fraud and market manipulation. Therefore, Option C is the correct answer. Question 60. Mr. Johnson, a municipal securities principal, is reviewing the regulations related to manipulative and deceptive devices. Which federal legislation expanded the scope of these regulations to include municipal securities dealers? A. 
Securities Act of 1933. B. Securities Exchange Act of 1934. C. Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. D. Graham-Leach-Bliley Act. The correct answer is C. Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. Explanation. The Dodd-Frank Act expanded the regulatory authority over the municipal securities market and extended the prohibition against manipulative and deceptive devices to municipal securities dealers. This legislation aimed to enhance investor protection and market integrity by applying consistent standards across different segments of the securities industry. Therefore, option C is the correct answer.